In this video, I'm going to show you something fairly simple that you can make, which has the potential to save your life and others while operating your vehicle. Let me show you what it is, how it works, and what you'll need to make one. You're now looking at the device that I designed called the Snooze Alert. This was designed to fit very comfortably over your ear. You can also wear glasses while this is on your ear. And what it does, it prevents you from falling asleep while driving your vehicle. In the event that your head tilts a certain amount of degrees, which happens to be fully adjustable by rotating the centerpiece, what you're going to hear is an alarm. Right over here is a piezo alarm. Inside this component is a built-in oscillator, which creates the sound that you're going to hear. The circuit operates using a CR2032 lithium coin cell, which is 3 volts. If made, as shown in this video, using the exact same components, the alarm should not be that loud that it would damage your hearing. If you do not use the same components as shown, then your piezo alarm may be very loud, and you're going to have to use a resistor in series with that component to get the sound to be lower so you do not damage your hearing. If you have a tendency to fall asleep by tilting your head backwards, then you can rotate the center like I just showed you so the switch is at the top. And when you tilt your head back a certain amount of degrees, which is predetermined by the rotation, you will hear the alarm sound, which should wake you up. Now before I go any further, let me place this on my ear to demonstrate for you how this works. You're driving your vehicle, you start to doze off, and then your head tilts down. And you can adjust the sensitivity by rotating the whole thing. Let's go more this way, Oop, wrong way, that way. Now I gotta go much further with my head. And less range of motion. And that's how it works. Let me show you exactly what you're going to need to make one yourself. The first thing you're going to need is a one foot length of solid copper wire. That's 10 gauge wire. And it's available at any hardware store or home improvement store. You're going to take this wire and it's going to be bent around the outside of your ear like you see right here. When you're done bending it into the shape you see right here using needle nose pliers you're going to make sure this top edge has been filed nice and flat because you want this as smooth as possible when you go to rotate the electronic components in the center. The back side of this loop goes behind your ear, it's a snug fit, and it looks like what you see right here in this short clip. The next thing you're going to need is the CR2032 coin cell holder, right here. And I will be placing links to all these items for you to make it easier in the video description area. A very tiny single pole double throw switch like you see right here. The piezo alarm looks like what you see right over here. I'll give you a close-up of the number on it in a minute. If you purchase one that does not have the built-in oscillator, when you connect up the power to it, all you're going to hear is a short click and that is all. So you want to make sure you purchase the right one. Originally I was going to use for the sensor one of these tilt switches and I have a video showing what the inside of this tilt switch looks like as well as a UVC light that I made that only comes on when it's facing downward for safety and both are shown up here circle with the eye you can click on that circle with the eye anytime during this video and I'll also be placing links at the end of this video the problem with the tilt switch is the level of sensitivity is not as good as one of these very tiny mercury switches. So you're definitely going to want to use one of these very inexpensive mercury switches. 
once it's installed on the unit, you could apply some silicone sealant over the entire thing if you're paranoid about breaking it and having the mercury fall out. Also for this project, you're going to need one of these body panel retainers. Auto Parts Stores or Lowe's has one like this. It's about 3 quarters to 7 eighths of an inch long, 5 sixteenths to 3 eighths of an inch in diameter, maybe 7 eighths of an inch across the top, and just make sure it's fairly flat. You're also going to need a couple of nylon washers that can slide over this because you might have to take up some slack in the bottom. And this also lets this rotate very easily. So you're going to want to add one of these on top of here before this gets pushed all the way through. As I mentioned earlier, if you choose not to use the alarm shown in this video, and you choose to use a smaller one that's black, what's going to happen, the audio is going to be too loud to have a position that close to your ear. In that case, you're going to have to use a 1K quarter watt resistor in series with the alarm as shown in the schematic right here. Okay, the schematic is very simple. Right here is your three volt coin cell holder. There's the positive. It goes up and over to your switch. Now you only need a single pole, single throw mini. I only had a single pole double throw three pins, so one pin is not going to be used on that, as you'll see when I show you how to set everything up. The other side of the switch goes into the piezo alarm, positive. If you're using the correct one that I'm showing, then you would go directly over to the mercury switch and then to battery negative. If you choose to use a different one, then right over here, you're going to have a resistor, all right, and that's going to be your 1K. Take the copper wire that's been bent into the shape of your ear. You're going to take the body clip right here, the panel retainer, that has the nylon washer slid over it, and push it into here. All the way down until it's fully seated, right there. Once it's inserted, if it's loose, it shouldn't wobble around. Just flip it over, take needle nose, and just gently tighten the copper like that. That should keep it from wobbling around and it should still rotate. All right. The next step, you're going to trim off the back side of this, leaving only about a quarter of an inch past the copper. That could be done with a hacksaw blade, diagonal cutters, or a very sharp utility knife. Once it's been cut off, like you see right here, take some sandpaper or a file and make sure everything is nice and smooth. The next thing you're going to do is take some 91% rubbing alcohol, wipe over this plastic, allow it to air dry, and then using either hot melt glue or what I used, clear silicone, available at any hardware store. You're going to take the back side of the battery holder. Right here it says positive. Keep in mind it makes no difference how the battery goes in here. This could be negative, that could be positive. It'll work either way but make sure you remember which side is positive. Place a little bit of hot glue or silicone right here, and then you're going to position it right on the center, like that. And you're going to allow the glue to fully dry before going on to the next step. The next thing you're going to do, and you could have also done it before the step, but I took a pair of diagonal cutters, small ones, and cut it after the fact. Just cut off this pin coming from the battery holder right here. You only want the center and the left. Once that lead has been cut off, the next thing I want you to do is cut this lead in the center in half, and then you're going to bend it 90 degrees so it's flush against the bottom, sticking straight up. On the switch, you're going to take the center pin, cut it just a little shorter, maybe a sixteenth of an inch off, and the two on the outside ends you're going to bend the very ends at a 90 degree angle as shown in this image here. You can see the center pin of the switch has been soldered to the center pin of the battery holder which you cut in half and pointed straight up. Once the mercury switch is soldered in position as shown, 
you're going to take the longer lead, which is positive right here. On top, you can see the positive as well. And you're going to solder that end to the mercury switch. The other side right here is going to be hanging over the edge of the battery holder. And this one here, you're going to bend so it lays nice and flat. So you can reach right over to the mercury switch and solder it. Over here you can see that the alarm was glued to the battery holder using clear silicone and then the lead that's negative it goes from here under the switch and then it goes all the way over you can see it right over here to the first pin of the battery holder remember the center pin goes to the switch and the first pin on the far left that was remaining the wire goes from that pin under the switch over to the negative and when you're done just make sure everything has a nice layer of silicone so everything stays nice and tight and you're good to go. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist. I have a lot of very cool circuits on this channel. I have a parabolic mic circuit. I have a really amazing circuit shown on this channel that shows you how you can listen through concrete walls and floors. So be sure to check out my video playlist if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos. Thanks for watching.